Hello, my darlings. It's ALB in Whisperland here. Thank you so, so much for joining me for another painting video. I took um, a little bit of a break from painting. It wasn't intentional, um, just things had been a little chaotic and outside of art that I was doing for work. I wasn't feeling super propelled towards making art. Um, I wouldn't say I wasn't feeling creative because I had so many ideas. But when it came time to actually putting like pencil to paper, I was feeling really stuck, you know? I think I was kind of like Kiki, like I wanted to fly something there blocking me a little bit. So I think I, I've had to find kind of my new spark lately and um, for myself, I'm, I tend to just push myself into things when I'm ready. So I've been painting the last couple of weeks and it's been feeling good again. <laughs> so if you're in that place where you're maybe trying to fly and it's not the right time, don't feel bad about that. It will come. It came for me. And so that's why I wanted to paint with you today. Um, sometimes when I do these videos, you guys will comment and say, like, I'm painting along with you, or I'm working on my own art, or knitting, crocheting, I love that so much. It makes me feel like we're doing it together. Or, you know, even folding laundry. That's what I do while I watch ASMR. But also, if you're just watching to relax, that's, that's excellent too. Let's all do our best at that. Tonight, we're going to be doing something a little unusual from my previous painting videos. We're not going to be painting on, like, a beautifully cut piece of paper. We're going to be working with my sketchbook. Never really actually painted in a sketchbook before. I guess I can't say my whole life, but in recent memory I haven't done this in a really long time, if ever, so it's going to be interesting to try to um, do this today, but we're going to have an adventure. We're going to have our fun, and thank you for joining me. Let's just get started. Some of you who may be particularly keen will recognize this sketchbook from a pretty recent video I posted, my what's in my bag video, the one with the purple purse. I've been carrying this little sketchbook around and I haven't really done a whole lot in it. But I did manage to get one sketch done. And right here, I did this on the subway while well, on my way to an appointment I recently had. I was like, oh, I have my sketchbook. Why not do a little sketching in it? This paper is for watercolor, but it's not quite thick is the paper I'm used to using for watercolor. Generally, I like a 300 pound watercolor paper. Uh, I'll also, you know, often use 180 pound or 140 pound watercolor paper, but this is a lot thinner than I'm used to. I'm willing to give it a shot anyway, of course. We're going to start out with my favorite tape, my super favorite tape, which is this purple scotch delicate surface tape. This is like um, a washi tape, but it's made for people who paint walls, and you can usually find it actually at hardware stores, places like that. That's where I buy mine. It is my favorite tape to use, and 
unfortunately, because of that, I don't have enough left to tape out this entire painting today. I'm gonna have to use some of my backup tape, but that's okay. We make do. I can't recommend this purple tape enough, though. It's really my favorite, especially for working with gouache, which is what I'm gonna be painting with today. This blue tape is also by Scotch. It's the Scotch Blue Sharp Lines Multi-Surface Tape. This one is actually better if you're painting walls. It's very heavy duty. Can you see the texture difference between these two tapes? The Scotch Blue Tape is very intense, but I prefer I'm a little nervous about my um, bulldog clip leaving a mark on this paper, so I'm going to use some of this paper towel, just cut out a little rectangle, and I'm going to use this as cushioning. A lot of times when you're using a bulldog clip on anything, you can leave marks because it clamps very hard. So doesn't hurt to add a little bit of extra protection. I need to add in some backdrop to this, so I'm thinking I'm gonna do kind of like a park scene. Seems like the easiest way to go. It's always fun to paint happy little trees blue skies, things like that. Especially because I don't really have a super strong plan with this one. This green tape is just regular degular washi tape that I got at Umamo, actually. Which is, if you don't know, if you don't have Umamo where you live, it's kind of like Daiso. It's a lot of Japanese imports. It's really fun to shop there. Most things are like two dollars, but then you kind of end up spending too much money there because you fill a basket up with two dollar items. Or maybe that's just me, but that's what usually happens to me when I go there. This washi tape is not my first choice in terms of tape to use on a painting, but I'm gonna make it I'm just using my little X-Acto blade to cut out the tape. I'm blocking out our main characters here so that I can just focus on the background. A lot of times this really helps me to visualize the piece better as well as making it easier. I don't have to worry about, you know, getting paint in areas I don't want to get paint into. Today's paint, I'm going to use Liquitex. This is the acrylic gouache. I've recently gotten into it, and I've been liking it a lot. As well as the Turner acryl gouache. This is basically the same thing, different brands. The thing about this Turner brand is they do these awesome neons. Look at that. That is so intense. So I have like, I think three of these Turner acrylic gouaches. Most of the colors though I'm going to be using today are this Liquitex. The tip on these bottles is awesome. It's probably one of my favorite things about the overall design. You can squeeze out exactly the right amount of paint. And paint, you know, can be expensive, so that's a good feature. I'm using these new brushes that I just got as a birthday gift today. Um, one of my best friends got them for me, and this brush on the label, it says cat's tongue, which I thought was so cute. It actually really is the shape tongue. And the point of the thing is to 
be able to get into perfect little corners. As you can see, I'm painting this like very light sky blue color and this brush is really letting me get into all these little nooks and crannies. I'm not really watering this color down at all. Gouache you can water down and do really nice washes with. Similarly for this acrylic gouache, you can water it down plenty. But I really like the, like, mm, opaque look when it comes to stuff like this. And I'm just adding in some lighter and darker tones with a dry brush. Just the same color, but mixed with a little bit of, like, white paint and black paint just to have a little bit of dimension. I'm not trying to do a photorealistic look today, but I don't want my colors to sit a little too flat, you know? So, there's something about using the washi tape to block out the main figures, which is, you know, like I said, I'm doing it to keep paint off of that area, but in another way, it also really helps me be able to kind of unfocus my eye and just see the background for what it is instead of being a background with relation to whatever characters I'm painting. If you've never done this before, I really recommend it. It helps me so much. So, I'm trying to give the, uh, I guess, illusion of a really sunny day. And so, in the faraway areas of the picture, I'm using lighter colors to kind of show, like, you know when you take a photo, sometimes, even on your phone, if it's really bright, the camera will pick areas up as being almost white. Um, in terms of photography, you call those like hot spots. The light is too hot on that area, meaning not hot as in temperature, but that the area is kind of blown out and you can't see it that well. I'm not trying to blow areas out painting per se. I wouldn't paint them like completely blown out like white, but I'm kind of supposing that the things that are further away in this painting will be lighter because the sun is hitting them very strongly. So that's why even though grass is green, in the far away spots, I'm using yellow. Like a really light is going to be our little path, and I'm actually using peach paint right now for the fur further away spots, and a purple paint. Actually, this pink color almost perfectly matches the washi tape, doesn't it? But I'm using purple in our foreground area, and I'm kind of being almost a little bit I don't want to say messy, but I don't, I'm not trying to make these lines crisp, super, super crispy. I want to make our characters really crispy, but in so doing, I'm going to make the background a little less perfect. That way, maybe it will kind of seem a little bit blurred out. Kind of like when you take a photo and your subject. It looks nicer if the background is a little bit out of focus, right? And it draws your attention directly to the subject of your photo. You know I like my pink. So I think it will be fun today to do cherry blossom trees. We're just a little bit out of season with these. I suppose 
cherry blossoms would have been blooming a month or two ago, but it's never a bad time for painting cherry blossoms, if you ask me. I had such strong plans this year. I was like super on top of the cherry blossom watch in Toronto here. There's like blogs dedicated to watching where different cherry blossom trees in various parks here in Toronto are doing on track with their blooming because cherry blossom trees only look that beautiful, perfect, picture-perfect look for a certain amount of time per year, which is why so many people really like to go get photos done with them, and I really, really wanted to do that. I was like, this is going to be my year. I'm going to do it. I was checking the vlogs and the blogs all the time to see what people were up to, like, how are the blooms doing? And then when it actually got time for the blooms, I got super booked up with stuff, and once again, it passed me by. I missed out on it. So, maybe next year. Maybe. is just me living vicariously painting this right now as if I got to go see the cherry blossoms but no that's okay I'll just I'll just paint them <laughs> it's almost just as good so I'm trying to use different shades of pink here to show which trees are closer I'm using also kind of like a dry, splotchy texture with my brush to get sort of the illusion of leaves. And now the paint stinking part of trying to do straight lines comes in to do these little branches. You know what? I've been really inspired lately re-watching um, the original 101 Dalmatians, the animated one. And my goodness, the background paintings in that movie are like, stupendous. They're gorgeous. You can pause that movie at any time and the painted backgrounds will astound you. I recommend only but a goodie, and I, every single frame, I just want to, like, have it in a book. As far as I know, they didn't make an art book of that one, or at least not one that is in circulation that I have accessibility to. I've looked it up on all kinds of sites and haven't found anything. Maybe other people would know better. But I would love to look at, like, an art of book of 101 Dalmatians. It's so inspiring. And I, I love watching it for that reason. That one was one of my favorites as a little girl. And now, even as a grown-up, like, I watch it. And I see new shots every time that I'm like, oh, it's so good. I'm feeling a little bit inspired by some of those park scenes in that movie with my painting today. I'm gonna do a little kind of curly cue, thin lines to make sort of a, a metal fencing around these trees here. And as well, I'm also going to add it around the pathway, and these are, you know, I'm doing it a little bit stylized, it's not meant to look photorealistic, and to keep things a little bit in my 
style, of course. And one thing I love to add to paintings is little swirlies all over the place. They're just so much fun to paint. I don't know why I like them so much, but it brings me joy. It makes me happy. And I have these, like, really little itty-bitty paintbrushes. I think they're, like, zero, zero, zero width. So, I'm having to re-dip them in the paint every couple of strokes. Like, they really don't hold very much pigment, but that's how you get those little itty-bitty tiny lines that are so satisfying. It really can't be said enough how small the surface I'm painting on is. I have pretty tiny hands, but even my hand is taking up the entire space of this painting by resting on it. And now we're going to take the washi tape off, which is one of my favorite parts of doing this. It's probably a big part of why I tape things off. It's just so satisfying to remove the tape at different points in the painting process to either reveal a finished product just like nice clean lines. And I like to use tweezers for this because sometimes the paint can crackle or, you know, things like that. Or break if it's a little bit thickly put on. It can become brittle in a way. So I use the tweezers to just kind of curb out any potential little errors that could happen. They still happen sometimes, but also it's a little bit more satisfying, I'll admit. And, you know, I have to have my fun in that. What's the point of doing things like this if you're not having your own satisfaction? So we're pulling the tape off and we're revealing the original sketch on the subway, which is the new Pokemon starter, Sprigadito. I love, I love saying their name, Sprigadito, Sprigadito. It's so cute. Sprigadito is a little hopgrass type cat Pokemon. And I've just been really, like, thinking about Sprigadito ever since the new starters were announced. If you're watching this video, perhaps in the far future, um, you should know that at this very moment as I'm painting this, we don't know what the evolutions of Sprigadito will look like, but simply that they are a cute cat, and that's good enough for and I decided to do Eevee as well, because I thought, you know, they're both about the same size. They're both very cute, very precocious Pokemon, and I thought they would be good buddies to be running around together. You can kind of picture them getting up to, I don't know, all kinds of little shenanigans together. It's easy to imagine them getting up to no good. <laughs> Maybe being, I don't know, little impish, little impish guys. So, it was easy for me to pair them together. Some of the other paintings that I've been doing the last couple of weeks have also been Pokemon paintings. It's just very comfortable for me to paint Pokemon. They're very soothing characters. They're fun because I can paint or draw them in my style, and I feel like it still works, you know? And a lot of them are so dear to my heart. So some of the other uh, Pokemon that I've been painting are, I did uh, a Sylveon painting, 
did a Vaporeon. I know, shocker. But, you know, I love Vaporeon, so. And I also did a ink bio bloom and Oddish painting. And it was really fun to do. If you're interested in seeing those pieces, I have pictures on my Instagram, so you can check those out. I'll put them in the description as well. We're giving Sprigatito his little green ears. He kind of looks like a Siamese cat, maybe. Or there's a bunch of different cats with that sort of mm, like coloring around their face. So, so cute. I think ragdoll cats also have that look. I think it's like one of the most appealing looks for cats, especially also when they have little feet that are different colors. Oh, I think it's so cute. But I'm a sucker for cute cats in general, so <laughs> any little cute face on a cat, I love it. And in the original artwork that's been released of Sprigatito, the shape on its face is not quite a heart, but I think it would be cuter if it was a heart. So that's kind of how I'm painting my Sprigatito today. It's not a hundred percent accurate, but hey, it's my painting. I can make a heart on its face if I want to, because that's how I think it would look the cutest. I have to be careful here as well, since the background has a lot of green in it. I need to make sure that the green that is on Sprigatito is different enough that it doesn't blend in. So for the main body part, I'm doing like this really pale mint and for the little details, I'm trying to mix in a lot more yellow in the green paint. That way it's a different green. Otherwise, with green on green, we would just we would lose Sprigatito in the grass. So, in addition to, of course, outlining it in a bit, I'm trying to make it look different. Different enough that maybe you wouldn't even need an outline, although I am planning to outline it. Painting Evie now. I'm using a different brush because Evie's shapes are kind of different. I don't know about you guys, but I like Evie to look really round and soft and fluffy, sort of like a Pomeranian, I guess. That would be the closest animal that I would relate Evie to. Some people think Evie looks like a fox or a cat or a bunny or a dog. I think really, depending on the artist, Evie can look like any of those animals. But when I think of an Eevee in my head, I kind of think of sort of the size and approximate shape of a Pomeranian, so I like for Eevee to be round and fluffy. That's very cute to me. And this is such a fun color to paint with. Sort of mixing oranges and yellows a bit of white and also a little bit of black paint. For my acrylic gouaches, I don't actually have browns, which is why I also painted the walkway with purple and peach. I suppose I could buy that color paint. I just haven't yet. Um, they aren't the cheapest paints to buy, so I only have I think six or seven colors, but really, if you're creative, you only need so many colors. You can make colors with other colors, so, you know, for now, that's what I'm gonna do. I may, at some point, 
treat myself and get a couple more tubes. It seems so far like they're gonna last a while because um, I've done, mm, I guess this is my fourth painting using the recent tubes of Liquitex acrylic gouache that I bought and I have not put any sizable dent in them. Oh, in fairness, I do make relatively small paintings. So far, nothing bigger than like um, 8 by 10 size. So, you know, all things being equal, they seem like they're going to last a good while. And who knows, maybe next time I go into the art supply store, I might treat myself to a couple more too. They have a very nice finish. I think one of the reasons I've been moving lately from gouache, which is what I was using previously, to more of an acrylic gouache is because they have a more opaque matte sort of finish, which I really like. I also like that they are less um, likely to crack or crinkle and flake. They have a sort of pliability to them once they're applied to the paper. So overall, like the light fastness and the texture of the acrylic emulsion is very nice, but it does have its downsides. In comparison to using watercolor or regular gouache, um, it can be a little bit more time sensitive to use this because just like an acrylic, once this type of paint is dry, there is no turning back. It is dry and set forever. When you're painting, this is very appealing. Especially if, like me, you like to make bold shapes and layer, doing lots of layering in my paintings. Sometimes with watercolor or regular gouache, when you're trying to layer, you can pick things up from the layer underneath and get blends of color that you did not intend, which can be annoying. However, with watercolor and gouache, you can set your brush down and even come back to it days later without having washed your brush out, and you'll still be able to get your brush clean just by, you know, using soap and water because it's water soluble. Whereas with acrylic paint and by extension, acrylic gouache that I'm using here, once the paint dries in your brush, your brush is pretty much toast. So you have to keep water on hand, of course. However, you don't want your brushes to be sitting in water long term for upwards of hours because it will destroy the glue inset in the brush fibers, and the water will also travel up the wood of the brush handle. Even if you're using a plastic-based brush, which many of my brushes are, the water sitting in the bristles for so long, it will destroy the glue, and also, when a brush is being, you know, stored vertically on its bristles, the ends will get all messed up. They'll get out of shape. You won't have those beautiful sharp lines anymore. So, you know, there's pros and cons to using different types of paint. I'm in no rush to get rid of my watercolors or stop using them. Right now, I'm really enjoying using acrylic gouache, and it's exciting to try new things. Sometimes it can help get you out of a rut, 
to try new art supplies. And that's why I'm enjoying it so much. I used a dry brush to create a lot of texture on these two, but this is kind of the most important part. This is the make or break part of the painting, as far as I'm concerned. Getting these tiny little details right is, in my head, how I think of it. This is where the little characters become cute. Up until now, the version of them that's in my head that I can see is cute, it does not exist on paper. So if I can get this right and capture their feet in the way I'm trying to show them. That's how I can express their cuteness to other people. A lot of times when it comes to sketches that I turn into paintings, I can see fully in my mind what I want the finished little character to look like when the painting is done. Nine times out of ten, I have no idea what I want the background to be. But in my head, in my mind's eye, I can see how the finished character will look. And so I think of it as being my job to transform them from just being in my head to being something other people can see too. And especially with paintings like this, sure they look cute I guess in the sketch when there's nothing else on the page, but paintings have an ugly middle face. They just do. Sometimes when I'm watching artists I like, there's a moment held in the air watching them paint or draw where I feel like I have to give in to the feeling of trust for them because I'll be watching them and the painting will begin to enter what I, what I consider to be the ugly metal phase where it kind of doesn't look like anything and it definitely doesn't look great but it has to go through this phase to come to the other side where it looks great but there is a moment, too, when I'm watching other artists I like, and their work will enter that stage where I think to myself, I do not know how you're going to make this look good. I really don't. But I just watch and trust them, and they always see it through to the other side, which is inspiring for me, too, because sometimes you get to that point piece of work where you are in that ugly middle stage and you think to yourself, like, I do not know how you're going to see this through to the other side where it looks good. So you also have to have that trust in yourself too, which can be tricky to do, especially if you're not like in a great art headspace. Sometimes a bad painting. I have done that recently for sure, where I push through the ugly middle phase to the other side and I look at it and I'm just like, hmm, I don't like this at all. But it was still a painting that was worth making and I'm glad that I didn't give up during the ugly middle phase because sometimes you learn the most in those paintings where you're just like, hmm, I pushed through and it did not work the way I wanted it to. It's not looking like how it was in my head, but I see where along the way it got turned around and I know how to do it differently next time are sometimes the most important paintings that you can make. Those are the ones you don't have to show anybody, but it 
can still learn something really important from them. And the thing I learned in my other paintings will come out in the better ones. But maybe not in a way anyone else can see but me. I'm doing kind of a dark green on Sprigatito, but I'm not using the same thickness of line all the way around for every single part. I'm trying to kind of like suggest certain weights on certain parts by making the line thicker there or thinner there. And of course I have to add a couple little swirlies. I know that this kind of like tuft of chest fur on Sprigatito is like kind of supposed to be in a leaf pattern. But I still want it to look fluffy and still look soft and like cuddly, you know. If you are watching this and you are a Pokemon fan, let me know what do you think of the new starters? So far I'm really into them, like a lot more than many previous generations, although, you know, I love Poplio, but I'm interested to know what you think. Right now I'm sketching some little cherry blossoms in. Sometimes when I'm painting on top of like a very key area, it can make me feel a little more, I guess, like secure or confident in myself to just draw myself a little outline with the pencil that's a lot easier to paint over if I mess up, and it can just give me a little more confidence in it. I want to have, like, some cherry blossoms that are little petals floating in the wind, kind of suggesting, like, movement and fun, especially for these little guys running around in the park. They would have some petals floating in the air, you know? So I have a couple here that I'm painting very sharply. I want it to be clearly defined what these are. Very much so, like, these are little pink petals, and you can see at a glance what they are. They're in focus in my mind. Again, to use kind of the camera analogy, perhaps these petals would be on the same pain and depth of field as our two little friends here. But I'm also going to use a dry brush and paint in some petals in a much less sharp way sort of suggest that these panels are moving faster in the wind, or they're floating by, or they're just out of focus, I suppose, in a bit. And it can be nerve-wracking to paint over top of characters that you've, like, meticulously done the lines on. That can be hmm, the scariest part, because you're like, wow, I put a lot of work into making this little guy perfect and cute. Now I'm just going to paint this random petal on top and hope that it looks good. You have a lot less control in those moments, at least in my mind, but it's worth it. Too about this acrylic gouache is if I get a little too much paint, I can just wipe it away with my finger, you know? As long as you move fast, the paint isn't dry yet, and since the areas underneath aren't gonna move from being touched with water or other paint, you can just wipe it away. That's definitely one of the bonuses of working with this type of paint. 
Even though this is a painting in a sketchbook that I plan on holding on to, I'm still going to sign it. Any piece worth finishing is worth signing as well. I hope that you can really see the size of this. It's very small. Here is my little itty bitty paintbrush so you can get a little perspective on the size of this painting. I'm happy with how it turned out, especially given the size constraints. And now we get to, to the best part, which is removing the tape from the edges of the blue tape is very thick and intense, so sometimes you can get a little crackling on the side here, luckily. It's not, not too much to worry about, but you never know. And the top here, it's so satisfying to kind of paint on top of the tape as if the image continues outside of those boundaries and then to pull the tape away and reveal that very sharp line also satisfying. I think we did good today with this bulldog clip. It's definitely interesting painting on a sketchbook. It didn't feel as nice and tight is when I can tape just a single sheet of paper to my easel, but it wasn't too bad, I think, simply because we were able to use the bulldog clips. It helps a lot. And we've got this nice and sharp line here on the bottom. You can see what I mean with the it really does a good job, so I need to go gift myself a restock of that tape. It comes in three different sizes even, so I might uh, pick up all three. <laughs> Here's some close-ups of our painting today of Evie and Sprigatito in the cherry blossoms having a grand old time. I kind of want to have a grand time like this myself, so I'm using them as maybe inspiration for me, <laughs> if you will. I want to say also a heartfelt thank you to each and every one of you for following me along on, I guess, I want to say like my artistic journey. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what kind of art want to make, what I want it to look like, um, but it's a process. I'm leaning into it, and I just appreciate you so much for being here <laughs> as I go through that. It's uh, tricky, but I know a lot of you can relate and have gone through the same thing, so I want to say thank you for being here, for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.